Circular motion and angular speed. I put this from Lord of the Rings in here before. We're going in circles. So if we have something that is going in a circle, well, let's just assume. Uh, so let's, let's uh, put a point right here. And this right here could be a linear piece of the speed. In other words, right at this moment right here, it's going up. But as this, as it's spinning around at this moment, then it's going to the left, let's just say, this V. And at this moment right here, it's going down. I'm just trying to draw the vector here. So that's V here, and over here as well. Okay, so that means that if you look, the length should be the same. I mean, I haven't drawn it all that well, but you know, the length is supposed to be the same as it goes away around. The thing is, it's changing direction all the time. Okay, well, if it's going around something, there should be some kind of speed. Remember uh, what we have for speed. Remember that V equals a distance over a time. So that means you just have to remember, hey, uh, what is the distance by going around in a circle? Remember that a circle, if I go all the way around, that's actually 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle. And so that means then that if you want to do the distance, you can do the velocity then, or sorry, the linear speed will be the distance traveled all the way around, which is 2 pi r, divided by the time it takes to go around a circle. I basically just derived from first principles the idea that, uh, well, you get this, you actually get this formula in your data booklet, but it just goes like this. It says the linear speed, which is v, equals 2 pi r, we'll just make it nicer here, over capital T, where capital T is called the period. So just to reiterate then, V is the linear speed, that's in meters per second, so nothing weird about that one. R is the radius, well that's gonna be measured in meters, and T is the period, that's the time it takes to go one whole circle. So the time it takes to go around, that's one period. So for example, on Earth, you know, when we're going in orbit around the sun, uh, you know, then the time it takes us to go around uh, the sun, well, that's one year, right? So, or you can say, you know, the time it takes to spin around something if you're in orbit, whatever. So this right here is the equation, and uh, that's pretty helpful. Now it gets a bit weirder. See, now we're going to have uh, angular velocity, which is slightly different. So in this case right here, we're going to consider, for example, um, straight line here and a straight line here. We're going to consider basically what we're doing here is looking at an angle that's going out. And so we're going to call that sort of a delta theta, let's just say something like this. That's going to be like the angle that's swept out here. And we're going to consider something that we have a new idea here. We're going to have something, keep in mind, uh, just like before, where we had, you know, a distance over time, you know, like a speed is a distance over time. In this case here, I'm going to use this idea, except if I go all the way around in a circle, I don't know if you ever remember this, but these are called radians, and it gets a bit weird, but going all the way around, the idea is you go 2 pi radian. This is a key thing it really helps to know here, okay, is that you need to know that going all the way around a circle is 2 pi radians. And it's related, remember, um, if you had a circle of just radius 1, well going all the way around would be 2 pi r, that would just be, you know, 2 pi times 1. So that's why we just say it's 2 pi radians is going from the start of a circle all the way around. That's the angle that you've gone around in radians. Radians are a little bit weird. They're not degrees. They're a little bit different. So if we look at this, then velocity then is a distance over time. Well, then if you've gone around 2 pi radians, then it's just going to be equal to 2 pi divided by the time. Do you notice the only difference is there's no r here? That's it. So that's really the equation that we're going to use. So what's interesting now is we're going to take something and uh, change it a little bit. So instead of calling it v for linear speed, we're going to have a new variable we're going to call omega. And omega is just going to be this. It's going to be the distance over time in radians. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by the period. That's it. So this right here is an equation, and it's not on your data booklet. So you should memorize this right here. That's really important. So let's define things. So Omega here is your angular velocity. And what are its units? Well, it's 2 pi, which is, remember is in radians, so it's radians per second. So that's why it's going to be in radians per second. 
And that's why I have this dumb joke from South Park. Then it's supposed to be the skier, uh, ski instructor, where he's like, "You're going to have a bad time. If you're calculating the angular velocity, you're going to have a rad time. Get it? Because it's radians per time. <laughs> and t is the period. Of course, that's in seconds. There we go. So you should need to know this, and that's going to help you. Also, remember, uh, going all the way around a circle is two pi radians. So let's try to find the relation then between the linear speed and the angular velocity. Remember, linear speed is called v, angular velocity is called omega. So from before, we have v equals 2 pi r over t. And we also had omega, which was just equal to 2 pi over t. Do you notice that v looks just like omega? The only difference is there's an extra r going on. So that's why we have the equation in your data book that goes like this, because v equals... Um, and it's just omega times r. Do you notice that's because it's omega is 2 pi over t. That's this. In other words, this little piece here, that's just omega. So this here is the equation you get in your data booklet. And here, of course, are the variables again. Now, I think it's better to look at how it looks in total in your data booklet because it's not just written in different pieces. It's actually got the whole thing. So in your data booklet, it looks like this v equals 2 pi r over t equals omega r. This is what it looks like. And do you notice they don't give you um, what the equation is for omega. But the good news is there's like a little trick for it, right? Like if you know what you're looking for, look. Do you notice it goes v equals some mass times r, and this is this omega times r? That helps you to know what omega is. If you need to know it, that is omega. Okay, so that's the key. That's why I like using the data booklet because you can take this piece, V equals 2 pi R over T equals omega R, and you can know that, hey, omega then must be this 2 pi over T. So that's, I think, a nice little trick for you to actually find everything that you need for these.